إلى الله مرجعكم إلى الله مرجعكم وهو على كل شيء قدير. To Allah is your return, and He is most capable of everything. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna to check out the Murtad channel, Give Light. Give Light is allegedly a former Muslim that then became Christian. And in this video he talks about that one Quran verse that made him a Christian. So we're gonna check out this video only briefly. We want to hear which Quran verse was so shocking that made him Christian after all. But then ultimately we want to go into Bible verses and compare them to the also atrocious Quran verses. Guys, before we start the video, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below. And now with no further ado, let's have a look. It's common to hear from our Muslim friends that the Qur'an and the Bible from are similar Muslim books friends. and that they supposedly so complement one another. al ankabut verse 46 instructs Muslims to say these words to Christians and say, we believe in what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to you. Our God and your God is one and to him we submit. Yeah, and there's absolutely nothing new. People talked about this a million times previously. We're not talking about the Bible and the Torah the way that you can find them now. We're talking about the revelations of God. Muslims agree that the revelations of God are, of course, congruent with the revelation of the Quran, which is worship one God alone. This is why it is mentioned within that verse as well. Anything else that has been attributed and added later on, the Quran does not agree with and Muslims do not either. Allah in the Quran. They say Allah has offspring. Glory be to him. He is self-sufficient. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. Yeah, very you logical. Have no and this is what you find this. in the Old Testament Do you as well. say about Allah what you do not know? Exactly. And say all praise is for Allah who has never had any offspring, nor Yo. does he have a partner in governing the kingdom. Exactly. Allah has Logic. never had any offspring, nor is there any God besides him. Yes. What's interesting about these Quranic verses is that they imply that we Christians who are polytheists believe yeah. in three separate gods rather than one. Yes, please make more pauses between each word. Spread it out a bit longer when you talk about the... What is this man? Can't you form a normal sentence? You're talking yet again about the Trinity. It is always the same subject, the same old debate. Muslims and Christians have the same debate over and over again. This is nothing new. Is this truly what led you to Christianity to now leave the concept of one God behind and embrace the Trinity? Congratulations. Even if you look into the Bible, you will see that Jesus says the first commandment is Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The Bible does not speak about loving Jesus with all your heart, all your might and strength, but it talks about God. God alone. This is what Christ mentions. Of course, you want to justify this as being Jesus with saying that Jesus is actually God. After all, you make that claim. However, Jesus has not made that claim anywhere within the Bible. This is the logical contradiction that you have within your theology. And this is why, yes, from the Islamic perspective, you are seen as polytheists. Triune God. Triune. Oh, Jesus, what son of you? Mary, did you Octagon ever ask you. the people to worship you and your mother Where is the passage, as man? gods besides Allah? The Quran also claims that Christians worship God the Father, yes. Jesus, yes. and Mary. Which they do. 
<laughs> they have Man, do I have to remind you of Christian churches, Catholic churches, Orthodox churches, and the depictions of Mother, quote unquote, Mary everywhere. The Theotokos, the Mother of God. This is what Christians claim. You can find the icons of Mary everywhere. If you go to the Orthodox island of Mount Athos in Greece, which is the bastion of Orthodox Christianity, you will find that that island is dedicated to Mother Mary. Not one woman is allowed onto that island because that island allegedly belongs to Mother Mary. And then you can find the prayers where the monks and the bishops and the archbishops actually do pray to Mary. They pray to Mary. They pray to Jesus. They pray to saints. They pray to anybody but God alone. And this is what the Quran warns against. Believe. So disingenuous, man. Allah is the third of three and there is yeah. no god except one god and if they do not desist yeah. from what they are saying there will surely afflict the disbelievers among them a painful punishment yes Despite because you're worshiping something else than god allah still fails to comprehend the concept of the holy trinity <laughs> the third truth. The arrogance on this guy. Allah fails to comprehend. Man, not even you comprehend the Trinity. There is not one good explanation anywhere for the Trinity. This is why the Trinity got adopted later by the church. You needed endless councils to come to a conclusion if there is a Trinity, if Jesus is God, if Jesus is lesser than the Father and so on. The Trinity was a later concept. It did not exist during the time of Jesus. Anybody with any degree, even Christian scholars, will agree to that statement. It is later invention. In Islam, we would say it is a bidda after all. There was no such concept and therefore not even the people during that time, let alone Jesus, understood the Trinity. It was something that had to be conceptualized based upon Greek philosophy. And now you sit there, arrogant, pompous, claiming that even Allah, ha, he doesn't understand and the Trinity. Self-sufficient, Allah still fails to comprehend the concept of the Holy Trinity. The third truth brought to us by John's epistle is the that Christ Who was cleanses us from all our sins. Well, since the Quran teaches that Jesus was neither God's son, nor was he ever crucified, that means that he cannot make any atonement for sins. So now the question becomes, who takes that Man, role where is the in Islam? Muhammad talked to us, saying, on the day of resurrection. All right, so now we are not in the Quran. We are in Sahih al-Bukhari. So those are hadiths. However, this whole video was titled that there is one Quran verse that made him a Christian. I'm going to skip this part. Yusha Evans and I have some things in common. We've both read the Quran from cover to cover. We've both read the Bible from cover to cover. But here's the difference between Yusha and I. I don't try to twist the Bible into making it sound similar to the Qur'an. The Bible and the Qur'an are nothing alike. I agree. And I'm aware to see enough why? to understand that. And I'm honest enough to say it. Oh, we are yeah, super honest, very, very honest here. After this whole rant, we didn't see this one single Quran passage that allegedly made him a Christian. Of course not. He was referring to hadiths. He was talking about Yusha Evans that allegedly twists scripture. Okay, if you are so honest, let's read out some Bible passages and tell me if this is the God that you worship. And on that note, I want to make this very, very clear. And I want to agree with you, actually. I want to tell you that, yes, the Quran and the Bible are nothing. Nothing alike, because the God within the Bible is a brutal, vicious, merciless monster, and we surely do not worship the same God. Here is a passage from Job 2.3, the New Revised Standard Bible Version. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity. Although you incited me against him, 
to destroy him for no reason. So God destroyed a blameless and upright man who fears God for no reason because Satan incited him. So this is absolutely grandiose, of course, because how often will Christians actually claim Allah is Satan? Don't you see Allah is Satan? Evil, evil Allah. But here you see that your God can't even defend himself against Satan and punishes, destroys a good servant of his. Applause. Now we check Hosea 13, 4, 9 and 16 in the New International Version. You shall acknowledge no God but me. You are destroyed, Israel. The people of Samaria must bear their guilt because they have rebelled against their God. They will fall by the sword. Up until now, I of course have no issue with this passage because apparently the people of Samaria worshipped somebody else but God. However, the punishment for those people, check this out. They will fall by the sword. Their little ones will be dashed to the ground. Their pregnant women ripped open. So in Islam, as you know, Allah is the most merciful. However, your God here says their little ones will be dashed to the ground and their pregnant women will be ripped open. Find me one passage like this in the Quran. Now let's look at Judges 18, 1 to 28. And in those days, the tribe of the Danites was seeking a place of their own where they might settle, because they had not yet come into an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. Then they said to the priest, Please inquire of God to learn whether our journey will be successful. The priest answered them, Go in peace. Your journey has the Lord's approval. Then they took what Micah had made and his priest and went on to Laish, against a people at peace and secure. They attacked them with the sword and burned down their city. The Danites rebuilt the city and settled there. So as you can see here in the passage, the Canaanites were not the evildoers, but the Israelites were the invaders. Sounds familiar? This one is a very beautiful passage within the Bible as well, Isaiah 39 to 16. See, the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day with wrath and fierce anger. I will put an end to the arrogance of the haughty. Their infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be looted and their wives will be violated. So here God tells you again that the little ones, the infants, he really hates babies apparently, will be dashed to pieces before their eyes and moreover their wives will be raped ultimately. So yet again, we agree the Bible and the Quran are nothing alike. This is a very beautiful passage as well, speaking about diversity in the Bible. In Numbers 25, 6 to 13, we read, Just then one of the Israelites came and brought a Midianite woman into his family. So an Israelite brings another race to his family. In the sight of Moses and in the sight of the whole congregation of the Israelites, when Phineas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he got up and left the congregation. Taking a spear in his hand, he went after the Israelite men into the tent and pierced the two of them. The Israelite and the woman threw the belly, so the plague was stopped. The plague of race mixing was stopped. This is what the passage says here. So the plague was stopped amongst the people of Israel. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Phineas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, has turned back my wrath from the Israelites by manifesting such zeal among them on my behalf, that in my jealousy I did not consume the Israelites. So yeah, here you can read that your God is a jealous God and he does not want to see race mixing. However, when the priest got up and pierced them to death, the mixed race couple that is, God was pleased with that. Therefore say, I hereby grant him my covenant of peace. It shall be for him and for his descendants after him a covenant of perpetual priesthood because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the Israelites. So yet again, God applauds him here for his zeal because God hates race mixing. And this is why you can see so many so-called Christian conservative nationalists 
This, of course, supports their doctrine of nationalism, of ethnostates, etc. In Judges 11.30-39, to we read, And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord. If you give the Ammonites into my hands, whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites will be the Lord's and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Uh, by the way, the word burnt offering, in case you don't know, is actually holocaust. When Jephthah returned to his home in Mizpah, who should come out to meet him but his daughter, dancing to the sound of timbrels. After the two months, she returned to her father, and he did to her as he had vowed. So in a nutshell, he burned his daughter as an offering for God, i.e. for Jesus, because Jesus is God in your worldview, and he, of course, will accept this burnt offering. Now we get to Leviticus, one of my favorite passages within the Bible, Leviticus 26, 27 to 29. This is the King James Version. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you, also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins, and ye shall eat flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Let's compare this to the Quran yet again. The Quran tells us to worship God alone. Otherwise, we will have a severe punishment in hell. That is true. But this God here says you should worship him alone. Otherwise, you will eat the flesh of your sons or the flesh of your daughters. You will become a cannibal and eat your children if you don't worship Jehovah. Let's jump to Jeremiah 13, 15 to 26. Hear and give ear. Do not be haughty, for the Lord has spoken. So this is important to understand because sometimes we simply have storytelling within the Bible, but sometimes we have alleged revelation from the Lord. And now the Lord has spoken. And if you say in your heart, why have these things come upon me? It is for the greatness of your iniquity that your skirts are lifted up and you are violated. Because you have forgotten me and trusted in lies. I myself will lift up your skirts over your face and your shame will be seen. Do you understand what this passage is actually saying? God, because you transgressed against him, will lift your skirts. He will lift them up and then you will be violated. You will be raped. So yet again, your merciful, compassionate God, allegedly this is Jesus, and I of course absolutely distance myself from this statement. I do not believe that this is Jesus. He tells you that if you go against him, he will lift up your skirt and will you. Similarly, we read in Isaiah 3, 16 to 17, Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. So in case this is confusing to you, we have a little explanation to this. The New International Version covers up this embarrassing passage with make their scalps bold in place of discover their secret parts. In Hebrew, poth, vagina. Other translations are more honest. The Orthodox Jewish Bible has lay bare their nakedness. Amplified Bible, stripped naked. Complete Jewish Bible says, expose their private parts. And the common English version says, uncover their private parts. The Living Bible says, expose their nakedness for all to see. Even if daughters of Zion is a metaphor for Israel, it is a metaphor for sexual assault. And now the last passage, even though there are many, many more, but we're going to constrain it to 10 today, in Psalms 137, 8 to 9. This is something that many Jewish rabbis quoted as well. Some people say they are extreme, but in the end, they're just quoting their own scriptures. O daughter Babylon, you devastator, happy shall they be who pay you back what you have done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones 
and dash them against the rock. So yet again here the Israelites are commanded to smash babies against rocks and be happy about it. Alright guys, so this is it for today's video. As I already said, the Murtad didn't make one accurate point whatsoever. He didn't even quote the supposed Quran verse. However, I want to counter here and quote the Bible for you to see that he was actually right. The Quran and the Bible are nothing alike. Alright guys, but this is it for today. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support. And now, as always, may God bless you all, much love, and peace. What does it mean to be a Muslim? Around the world today, we are seeing fellow brothers and sisters suffering. Take a look at the events in Gaza, a sorrowful sight. Innocent people being killed just for being human. Ibrahim, a fellow revert, could not tolerate the oppression of Muslims around the world especially in the social media world. So he decided to create his own halal social media company called Dawagram. However, two months into his journey, he was arrested by local officers. Ibrahim now more than ever needs support of the Ummah to keep Dawagram been running. Every small donation helps. FreeIbrahimX.com